How's it going, y'all? Dr. Ben here, Dr. Ben Hassin here, uh, here with another vlog. It's been actually about five weeks since I did the last uh, film for a vlog, and that's because I have just finished my five week inpatient rotation, inpatient psychiatry rotation. Oh my god, it was a lot more um, intensive than I thought it was gonna be. I think it's actually one of my busiest rotations I've ever done. Like, I barely even had time to work out on certain days. And it is what time is it now it is 12 53 you might be wondering ben why do you look like you've just woken up and that's because i am back on nights for the next two weeks i just finished one week of nights it's the weekend the greatest thing about nights even though the hours are garbage if you've seen my other vlogs is the fact that i can actually uh get weekends off and get a lot of things done even though it's dead in the middle of the night um jean luc is super happy that i'm home more often but i'm gonna be really honest with you all i have not really been upkeeping all the things i need to do after moving i mean I'm, it's been month four since i moved to durham and i still haven't unpacked everything which is wild so tonight i'm gonna use some time to actually get some things done especially in my office because there's a bunch of junk in there that i just need to store away and i bought some storage storage shelves that i still haven't set up so that's gonna be the goal for today but before I do that, y'all want to give my little baby a little snackity snack? You want a snack, baby? Yeah? Okay, all right. Let's go. Let's go get him some wet food, which is his favorite uh, snackity snack. So I'm going to grab one of these bowls that I got. Oh, the lighting in the kitchen is so bad. Like, I need money so I can, like, update more stuff in this apartment. Because this apartment is old and actually doesn't have a lot of really cool stuff that my old apartment had. And like I said, I complained about the natural lighting, which it doesn't have as much either. All right, so I'm going to get him a, a, a full can of wet foodies. Going to give him some grilled... Oh, baby, rubbing against that. Some grilled fancy feast. There you go, baby. There you go. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, you got to pr practice patience. Yeah, there you go. All right, now my cat is a happy camper. So we can start making that shelf. Let's get good to go. Ooh, I can hear, I can hear the metal. Dad, this is packed tight. Hey y'all, so I just finished making the shelf right there and look at how much the gunk around here cleaned up in my office space. There's still a bunch of stuff that I need to fix away, but I'm tired right now. Um, slow and steady wins the race, right? Although I've been very, very slow recently, but we're intermittently steady. I'm very surprised by how much the shelf has been able to hold because not gonna lie i'm being completely brutally honest but when i was making this i was like wow this is very very flimsy i don't know if it can withstand as much weight as it's advertised to but it's been able to hold all the little car oils and stuff down there it's been able to hold all my protein shakes and all of this stuff uh, not everything is completely packed away as I want it to be, but I'm just too exhausted now. It actually took me quite a while to build this and then pack everything away. But um, things are clearing up. My hallway right here was actually full of the protein shakes because I didn't have the right <laughs> storage space to pack them away. Um, so now my place is a lot, a lot more cleaner. Alrighty y'all, so it is 3.43 and surprisingly I have some meal prep that I want to cook up before um, going to bed for the next day. I also want to wash my car tonight but we'll see because it's kind of cold outside if I get to 
do that and then I also need to shower. But um, I found this really cool barbacoa chicken recipe that I'm using drums to make. And it's very easy to do. All I had to do is buy a bunch of ingredients. I'll, if you want the recipe, just DM me on Instagram or something. I'm, I'm really busy right now, but you can also look it up. It's like barbacoa chicken recipe. So it's my first time gonna be, I'm gonna be making it. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I'm gonna cut up some onions. I also bought some extra mushrooms to add a little bit of extra protein to it. And it'll all be done in the instant pot. So we'll see how it goes. So this is the beautiful marinade that the chicken has been marinating over, I guess, a couple hours. I mean, it's been at least 16 hours since I marinated it. The outside has cooked a little from what it looks like because of the citric acid and content in this. Um, but look at how juicy this is. It almost looks like tandoori chicken. I'm so excited to cook this. I'm gonna put this in the Instant Pot for 10 minutes, shred it up, add the onions, add the mushrooms, and then some cilantro and basically that's it. All I had to do was prep the marinade and that was the hardest part. And I, I mainly just bought a lot of the ingredients and I had a lot of the ingredients already. So I hope this tastes good because I'm supplemental, supplementing beef for chicken just for the extra nutritional uh, content. I mean, chicken is leaner than beef and it avoids some of the triglycerides that beef has. Chicken in. Alrighty, chicken is officially in the pressure cooker. So, while we wait for the chicken to cook, I figured I will take some time with y'all to talk a little bit about how my first year of residency going is going since uh, we haven't done a check-in in a long time. Um, but it's going pretty well. Um, I don't know if y'all notice in my vlogs, I don't think you can really notice in, uh, the educational YouTube videos that I make is that my life is a lot less interesting now. I mean, I'm in residency and I don't always feel like I'm on top of the world. Also, super cute birthday gift, birthday slash graduation gift from my friend Kat. It's, um... Was commissioned, she commissioned another one of their friends to make a, a trans flag knitted scarf. It's so cool. It came with a cute little card. Um, but yeah, I'm just so, I, I'm always super happy when fans and like friends get me like cute little stuff. It doesn't always have to be trans themes. Just give me something that's cool. I mean, I've had friends who've drawn, uh, dr dr drawn, drawn me. <laughs> as like characters from my one of my favorite tv shows and other things like that so i always appreciate gifts just just hit me up so yeah uh residency inter intern year. so far i'm on month four i've done four different rotations um one of them has been night flow two of them has been night flow i'm in the second time of night flow i'm gonna be doing night flow three times uh this year for two week blocks i've done my inpatient uh my inpatient rotation in psychiatry i've done neurology i've done pediatrics so i've done quite the cast of things that i've had i have to do for my first year and oh my god y'all this it, it, residency is absolutely absolutely exhausting i barely have time for myself i feel like i'm a much more boring person now i don't even i don't think i've watched tv <laughs> in like three months i haven't really done anything fun other than you know hanging out with, with my co-residents which i will say is the highlight of residency right now i don't think i would have been as happy because i am happy still if it weren't for my co-residents i mean it's, it's it's just a great co-resident and vibe um, environment and I'm incredibly grateful for the friends I've made so far. I haven't made a lot just because I don't have time to go out that much but I'm incredibly grateful for the people I've been surrounded by. Another thing that I've noticed about myself is that I always knew that I loved teaching but I did not know how much I love teaching especially when it comes to teaching medical students and other people up until I got to residency. So uh, a, a bunch of scheduling things happened and I ended up like teaching two medical students in my inpatient rotation. And then I took at least one medical student in every one of my other rotations. And I just absolutely love teaching people, you guys. I know some of y'all who've watched me for a long time are probably like, Ben, duh, you make educational content for us. But 
it's something that I, I've always liked teaching patients, but I knew I liked teaching students, but I didn't know I would love it this much. They actually are the reason why I come back every day to work and I keep up to date with all the new stuff that they have to learn academically. Usually some a lot of the things that they learn academically doesn't really ap apply clinically to patients, but it's just like, I take so much pride in taking them in. They're like my babies and <laughs> kind of like allowing them to appreciate psychiatry as a specialty and patients with um, severe mental illness, especially patients who have episodes of psychosis. And I think there is a beauty in understanding that yes, they are in an acutely decompensated state, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have to be afraid of people. They're humans. So being able to teach medical students whether or not they're into psychiatry or not, and allowing them to appreciate that, and allowing them to understand that these patients not, need not just psychiatric care, but also, look at him, <laughs> but also need like all types of medical help from their doctors, it's been a blessing because every single one of my students so far has said that I don't know if I'm going to do psychiatry, which is not what I expect them to end up uh, choosing at the end of me teaching them, is that I want them to care about everyone and regardless of what specialty they go into. Something else that I found really, really like enlightening for myself uh, since starting residency is that I thought I was going to be the type of person who did primarily outpatient psychiatry, uh, who primarily dealt with depression and mood disorders, not psychosis. And those who struggle with um, mental illnesses and disease states that lead to psychosis. I thought that would be a lot for me to handle and I have to detach myself and all of this other blah blah garbage stuff that the media and society ends up telling you even as someone going into psychiatry i had that bias but going into this i realized how much i truly enjoy and care for my patients who have episodes where they go through psychosis and i i truly enjoy teaching them while they're in episodes where are where they are actively exhibiting psychotic symptoms because I am able to somehow get through to them and at least prioritize something about their mental health care or their general health care. And it was um, like every time that I'm successful in doing something like that, it makes me so, not just so proud of myself, but so proud of my patients because they're able to like fight whatever state that they're in to have some basis in reality. So um, yeah. A lot of things that I've discovered about myself while going through residency. I'm very tired. I'm very exhausted all the time. But it is one of the most rewarding and most humbling experiences I've gone through in my life. Also, I don't know if y'all even care about this, but I've been actively trying to date again. But with a lot of failures, um, this, this town is not as diverse, nor does it appreciate attractiveness in other non-conventional ways um, of other other people. I'm generally a short brown man, so I don't fit the traditional definitions of what attractive is. Um, so it's been incredibly hard. It's also the fact that I'm busy, incredibly hard to date, and incredibly hard to go on dates. I've gone to a couple with a couple different people. None of us really stuck. It's kind of disheartening, but at the same time, it's not a priority. Like if it happens, it happens. That's where I'm at right now. And right now I'm just like focusing a lot on self-growth and self-development. I think I'm a lot less showy now since starting residency, just because, you know, because of the nature of the work that I'm doing now. And, uh, you know, I don't need to be showy about my work. Um, that's between me and my patients. So. If you find my vlogs boring, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm going to be trying to be more interesting. I hope that you find me as, a, as an interesting person, but yeah, um, you're going to see a lot less of the fun stuff that I used to do in Atlanta. Also, this town barely has anything for me to do outside of work. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at, but I will try my best every time I do vlogs to show you something interesting that I'm doing.
Alrighty y'all, so it's pretty much done and I'm about to do a quick taste test. Here it is, it made two Tupperware containers, not full, but halfway um, of it. So that will be at least a week's worth of food. I'm gonna be honest, before I put the chicken back in to stew for a little bit longer, I taste tested it and I wasn't feeling it too much. So hopefully I didn't botch this recipe and hopefully it does taste good. I don't trust people on the internet who put ethnic food recipes on there, especially if I don't know the ethnicity of the person who made that recipe, which I didn't check. Um, but we're about to try it. Um, to be honest, I'm not too gung ho about this. All right, chicken barbacoa. It's I. I can definitely notice there's marinade. It's probably not meant for chicken. Something for that can handle uh, heavy spices a lot better. It it will. It's not terrible, but it definitely makes me miss um, actual actual beef. And I feel I'm gonna get super indigestion from eating this. And so I gotta make sure I have enough uh, Zantac on me when I uh, <laughs> when I take this out of the freezer. But uh, it'll be enough for me to like meal prep, I guess. Meal prep food isn't supposed to be super, super stellar. And I think for the general public, this is actually pretty fantastic, but I have a lot higher expectations for myself, um, but it'll do. Hey y'all, it's the first day of the work week, I guess. Um, but I wanted to show y'all one of the things that I've been doing lately, especially now that I'm eating a lot more cottage cheese. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that I've been incorporating more cottage cheese into my diet and it's allowed me to be leaner and get enough protein in for the day because something that I've been struggling with since starting residency is my appetite because my appetite I feel like has been completely non-existent because I'm so busy doing all the other things I have to do as a newly training doctor. So I went to Walmart and bought a ton of cottage cheese and I make a little recipe. My co-residents say it's weird, people on Twitter say it's weird, but it's been allowing me to get pretty significant, you know, gains. So I'm not complaining um, because yeah, what else am I gonna do with my time here? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I bought one of these cups, these Tupperware containers from uh, Harris Teeter. And right here, there's what, the one cup line. So I fill up cottage cheese to this one, or one, one cup line. That's about 26 grams of protein. And a lot of you are gonna be like, ew, that's disgusting that you have to eat it. If you eat straight cottage cheese like that, that's nasty. And you're absolutely right. I always had a hard time eating yogurt and cottage cheese because of that. But I found a pretty semi-decent solution to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it. So right now I have about a cup in here. So like I've said, 26 grams of delicious, not delicious, but cottage cheesy protein. So now I'm going to add PB Fit peanut butter and cocoa mix to this. Um, two tablespoons, and that's an additional four grams of protein and adds a little nice nutty touch to this cottage cheese with some flavor. So altogether, it ends up being approximately 30 grams of protein in this one little cup. There you go, two tablespoons right there. Now the super, super healthy version is just eating it like this, mixing it in, but I realize that life is too short and I need something a little bit tastier. And I generally treat this as like my dessert after dinner, like a couple hours after dinner, um, when I'm feeling uh, my sweet tooth, because I do have a sweet tooth. Uh, so what I do is I bought some cane sugar. I think I'm gonna get some more nectar type sugar, but this is 
the cheapest thing that was at Harris Teeter at the time. I'm gonna add some cane sugar to this and mix it in, and it'll be like a peanut butter cottage cheesy cup uh, to eat for dessert. Your discretion varies on how much sugar you wanna add. Oh, that was a bit too much, but it's okay. <laughs> It's dessert, and then I just mix it in. At first, it's gonna be a little chalky. But once you have it really well mixed in, it ends up being like a smoothish consistency. So this is like the final product. Look at this. Nice and smooth consistency, and I'm gonna have this like around maybe four to five-ish a.m. Mmm. Surprisingly. Very, very tasty. Happy Monday, y'all. Oh my gosh, a week has gone by already. I think the last clip I made was like back on Monday, like last Monday, where I was prepping my, my, uh, to-go meal for my first shift. I'm gonna be really honest, the first week of night flow was incredibly, incredibly easy to get through. I don't know why, maybe I, it's because I had a lot of energy and I was excited to start a new rotation, but that second week was incredibly difficult to get through because of the fact that like, oh my God, living through the night is not just emotionally taxing, but sleeping through the day is really hard and it's hard to get good sleep when you're sleeping through the day. So I was always very, very tired and I wanted to film some stuff for you all on the weekend and kind of show you all some of the outfits that I've gotten for a residency and some new shoes that I've gotten. But I'm going to save that for the next vlog because this weekend uh, I had a surprise visit from a friend uh, who lives in D.C. with her girlfriend. Had no idea, idea that she was coming, but I got to see her and got to meet her family, which was super, super fun. And you know, like, I just had such a great time we ended up getting hot pot and it was raining it was a dark gloomy day so i didn't even know if i was going to get some good lighting for the vlog so we ended up uh going to this new hot pot place that opened up in durham and it was surprisingly very very delicious i highly recommend and then the next day i met her family i met her mom who is an OBGYN, and her twin sister and we got some brunch food. So it was all in all like just a really great weekend to just spend with, just to spend with people that I like. Oh, and I saw like the Taylor Swift movie, the concert movie that came out because one of my attendings, she was gonna take her family there but ended up having to cancel. So there were free tickets available and one of my co-residents ended up getting those tickets. So we went and saw that movie and I was very, very surprised with how good the production of our concert was. I, I am not a Swifty. I will never claim being a Swifty, but after watching this movie, I will say that if I had a Swifty friend who needed a plus one to go to a Taylor Swift concert, would I object? Probably not, because that was really, really phenomenal. So, <laughs> uh, it was a, it was a really good weekend to kind of get back to baseline. I was very tired through the weekend too because I was just adjust adjusting back to the day schedule. But now, today I actually start my next rotation which is again psych emergency but not during nights. It's the second shift which is 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. which is ideal because during the day when the sun is out I can actually enjoy it a little bit before going into work and then after work I can come home and just go to bed. So ideally if I had a schedule that I could make for the weekdays, it would be the 1 to 11 p.m. shift because that's just like the cream of the crop <laughs> timing wise where you have energy in the morning and you can get stuff done before going off to work because I find myself ha lacking any energy when I come home from work if it's like a 9 to 5 or 9 to 7 situation or a 7 to 7 situation. So yeah, it's the start of another week, y'all. That's the end of the vlog. And I will catch y'all. Actually, I might start making the first clip for the next vlog, like right after I'm done filming this clip. But I'll see y'all in the next one. This is Dr. Ben.